Okay, let's go ahead and practice working with fractions and numbers. And we don't want to use our calculator. And of course, we need to be careful because there are a few things we need to consider when we are doing this particular problem or problems like this. So this would be a typical middle school or uh, basic high school problem that all of you should be able to handle. So, uh, you know, if you're like looking at this, and you're like, ah, I can do this. Well, why don't you just challenge yourself real quick, put your calculator away. If you could do this problem, I think it would take you less than one minute. Uh, so I would say on average 30 seconds to one minute, but don't rush because you can easily make a mistake. If you want to go and put your answer into the comment section, I'm actually going to show you the answer here in just one second, and you can see exactly how well you uh, uh, do with, you know, working with numbers like this. And it's important that you can handle this kind of arithmetic problem if you are taking any sort of like algebra class or beyond, okay, because the principles and concepts that we learn in arithmetic, like working with fractions, etc., uh, those carry on when we have variable expressions as well. You know, if I had like an X here, an X right here, well, we basically have to be um, thinking about this problem in a similar way or the exact same way. But uh, anyways, again, I'm going to show you the answer here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in mathematics. And I'm especially uh, talking to those of you out there that think you are just not good at math, all right? And there's a lot of you are like, I'm bad at math, I don't like math, and maybe you've struggled with math in the past, but you can be successful. But the key is you're going to need great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. It will help you out big time. Also, if you're preparing for any sort of test with a dedicated math section, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, uh, maybe uh, ACUPLACE or ALEX teacher certification exam. You get the idea. I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you out. If you homeschool, check out my award-winning middle and high school math courses for homeschoolers. And if you need some notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But you need to uh, learn how to be an awesome note taker. When you take better notes, everything goes better in terms of mathematics. And uh, if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. Again, we don't want to use our calculator, you know. That really kind of defeats the whole purpose. Put this thing away and go get your old school calculator, which is a piece of paper and a pencil. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer now. And here it is. The answer is negative 65 over 24. Okay, so uh, if you got that right, I must uh, reward you with a nice happy face and A+. Plus. We'll give you 100% and a few stars to make you feel extra special. Nice job. Okay, that means that you have some pretty good arithmetic skills. You certainly know how to work with fractions. And right here, you have to especially be careful because we're going to be generating a negative number. Okay, obviously, we have a negative um, number in our, our fraction here. Now, if you decided to take this 65 and divide by 24, let's just talk about this real quick. If you're like, oh, 24 goes into 65. In other words, we call this an improper fraction. And let me just take a quick second to explain this to you. So if we have a fraction one third, uh, let me put another way, three fourths, and two and one eighth. The, these are three type of uh, common fractions. When the bottom number, the denominator, is bigger than the top number, like in this case here, we call this a proper fraction. When the numerator or this top number is bigger than the denominator, like this case, four and four over three or four thirds, this is called an improper fraction. And then you have something called a mixed number, so like something like two and one eighth. So you can convert improper fractions to uh, mixed number fractions. So here, how would we convert a mixed number into an improper fraction? We go eight times two is 16 plus one, that would be 17 over eight, right? So you can kind of go back and forth between an improper fraction and a mixed number fraction. And um, oftentimes students will, will look and be like, oh, this is a, a um, improper fraction. So immediately they think they have to put their answer as a mixed number fraction. I'm gonna tell you right now, don't do that, okay? What you need to do is make sure your answer, your fraction 
is fully simplified, fully reduced. That is kind of a requirement in terms of mathematics, at least in terms of what your math teacher wants to see. But don't volunteer and take the time to turn this into a um, mixed number. And the way we would do that, like four thirds, you would take, uh, you would just take four and divide it by three. So three goes into four, one. So one times three is three. So that's remainder one. So that would be one and one third, right? Don't do that unless you're told by your math teacher because I've seen, uh, I don't know, maybe a million mistakes, uh, if I could write a million correctly, maybe not that many, but anyways, a ton over decades of teaching math where the student had the correct answer in terms of an improper fraction, but then he went and did all this stuff uh, that were trying to be a math hero, and then he made a mistake, and they turned in their uh, final answer as a mixed number, and it was wrong, okay? So I'm telling you right now, I know I'm spending some extra time on this, but uh, everything I do in my math videos on YouTube or any all my instruction, you know, I'm just not going to tell you how to do the problem. I'm going to really try to give you valuable insight from all the things that I've seen through the years so you don't make these mistakes, okay? Because... Um, you know, as a teacher, you see trends. You see that even uh, the best of math students can make those mistakes. So anyways, just a little bit about improper, proper, and mixed number fractions. But this is the answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the solution. And one thing we need to be thinking about anytime you have uh, a lot of different operations. So we have addition uh, going on here. We have multiplication. We have subtraction. We have uh, various operations. Okay, so we have to think about the order the order, uh, order of operations, and that would be what? That would be PEMDAS, right? So you always got to keep that in mind when you have a math problem and there's a lot of different things going on here, addition, multiplication, subtraction. We've got to be thinking about the order of operations, and PEMDAS is our guide, our kind of guideline and what to do. So the P when the PEMDAS stands for what? Well, it stands for parentheses. Or a grouping symbol, so you got to do everything inside the parentheses first. So effectively, we're going to have to uh, get this part of the problem done independently, and this part of the problem done independently. So we're going to have to add fractions here and subtract fractions here. Once we're done with all that, we can move on with multiplication, and that's what we're going to do uh, next. So uh, if you have trouble with any of this stuff, by the way, I'm going to suggest a couple uh, things. One my math foundations course and my pre-algebra course, I really get into fractions and order of operations and all that good stuff. But let's go ahead and actually do this now. And I'm going to give you a bonus. I'm going to uh, use a shortcut way to deal with these fractions. Okay, so uh, when you're adding and subtracting fractions, again, we're going to have to add fractions here and subtract fractions here. When you um, uh, add and subtract fractions, what gives most students kind of nightmares are just like, they're just like don't like to work with fractions is you have to think about the LCD, right? The lowest common denominator. So when we're adding and subtracting fractions, we have to make sure that the denominators of those fractions are the same. If they are not, we have to find the LCD and we got to go through all this kind of uh, rigmarole to fix up the fractions such that we can add or subtract them. Hopefully that makes sense to you, but there is a great a uh, little shortcut, uh, great hack, and one of my uh, more popular videos on my YouTube channel is, uh, I think it's titled, The Best Fraction Hack Ever, and this is one thing you can do to add or subtract fractions uh, when you don't want to find the LCD. Okay, so you definitely need to know this. I'm going to do this here. I'm also going to find the LCD. Uh, I'm going to do this problem again with the LCD, but here's what you can do. So let's focus on this uh, problem uh, first, one-half plus five-thirds. So uh, this hack is called the bow tie method, okay? So the way it works is this. It's going to look like a bow tie. If someone's wearing a bow tie, it looks like so, right? A little crazy bow tie like that. But here's how it works. You're going to take this fraction, this denominator, from the bottom right, It's ex this exact pattern, and you're going to go this way. So it's going to be 3 times 1. It's going to be multiplication. So 3 times 1 is 3. So this is an addition problem, so you're going to put plus, and then it's going to be 2 times 5. This is the next step. Okay, It has to be in this precise order. So 2 times 5 is 10. So this is the numerator of our answer. So 3, plus, or three times 1 is 3, plus 2 times 5 is 10, over... Uh, you uh, multiply this way, 2 times 3 is 6. 
Okay, and of course we can simplify that down to three uh, plus uh, ten is thirteen over six. I'm going to show you how we can uh, find the LCD and fix these fractions up. So if you got thirteen over six and you use the LCD method, that's perfectly fine. But I'm just showing you an alternative technique uh, to add and subtract fractions. One that you absolutely need to know. Okay, so uh, we're just going to take um, these problems one at a time. So now we're going to go ahead and deal with this fraction, right, or this problem right here, 3 fourths minus 2. So some of you might be saying, well, this is a whole number, you know, it's not a fraction. Well, you can make any number look like a fraction by just putting it over 1, okay? So if you're like, oh, okay, this is much easier, of course, if I would have wrote this this way, uh, it would have been, you know, a little bit easier to interpret, but you should know that anyways. Uh, you can make any number like like 7 uh, into a fraction, or think of it as a fraction by just putting it over 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and deal with this. Of course, we already figured out this first uh, addition problem. That's 13 over 6. So now we have 3 fourths minus 2 over 1, and let's use that same technique, that bow tie uh, technique. So this is going to be 1 times 3, again, bottom right to the top left, so that's 3. Now this is a subtraction problem. Again, they we're forming our numerator. And so we're going to put a subtraction operator right there, or a difference operator. And this is going to be 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, we, now here, this is going to form a negative number. But let's go ahead and finish up with our denominator. 4 times 1 is 4. So being very careful here, 3 minus 8 is not 5. That is a negative 5. This is the same thing as 3 plus a negative 8 negative 5 over 4. Okay, so we have our two parentheses part of this problem done. We added and subtracted these respective fraction problems, and so now we need to talk about how to multiply fractions, which is super easy. It's probably the easiest thing to do in math. When you're multiplying fractions, you simple, uh, simply uh, multiply the respective numerators. So in this case, this is 13 times negative 5. That'll be the numerator of our answer over the respective denominator, 6 times 4. So let's go ahead and just do this basic math. So 13 times 5 is 65, but of course this is a positive times a negative. So our final answer will be negative. Uh, that would be negative 65 over 24. And by the way, just as a little technical thing, a lot of students confuse is negative 65 over 24. Is that equal to negative 65 over 24? Can I write my answer this way? Or what if I had 65 over negative 24? These are all equivalent. You can actually write your final answer this way. Just remember, a negative divided by positive, this entire value, this fraction, is negative. So technically, this would be like the nicest way to write this. But if you gave me your answer like this with this negative 65, that's perfectly fine. But I just wanted to uh, state that because this question comes up. So if you ever... Well, I wondered about that. There is your answer. Okay, so let's take a look at this problem using uh, uh, the LCD to um, work with these fractions. So here I have one half plus uh, five thirds. I'm like, okay, two and three. These are not the same denominator, so I have to find the LCD. The LCD is six. Now, how you calculate the LCD? Um, again, I have tons of videos on my YouTube channel and in my pre-algebra uh, course. Uh, you'll learn all about that in my Math Foundations course as well. But the LCD is, in fact, 6. So I'm going to have to rewrite each of these fractions uh, such that the denominator is 6. So I'd multiply this by 3, this by 3, because 3 times 2 is 6. And then i got to multiply this 3 by 2 to make a 6. Multiply that by 2. So what are we going to get? We're going to get 3 over 6, and this will be 10 over 6. Now I have the same denominator. Okay, You can only add uh, or subtract um, fractions when the denominators are exactly the same, i.e. they have the exact same number in common. So here I have 3 plus 10. Let me just scroll down here. It's 13 over 6, and hopefully it looks familiar. It's the exact same value that we came up last time. And then over here, in this fraction, we have 3 over 4 over 2 over 1. These are not the common denominators, but the LCD of this fraction is 4. So I just multiply that by 4, this by 4, and we have 8 over 4. And you can see here, when you um, when we have the same denominator, we simply subtract the numerator. So 3 minus 8, be nice and careful, that's negative 5 fourths. And guess what? It turns out to be the same thing 
because now we're just simply multiplying these same fractions and we're going to get the same answer, negative 65 over 24. So I'm showing you both ways and you need to know both ways. You need to understand this bow tie method. Okay, this is one of the best things that you can know for algebra dealing with variable fractions because if you have something like x over y plus w over z, you might be saying, well, what's the LCD? You might be confused about this, but if you just do this bow tie method, this would be what? z times x or zx plus y times z, what? That would be uh, y, I'm sorry, y times w over y times z. There you go. That's how you would add these fractions, okay? You got to know this little technique comes in super handy, but listen, a problem like this could stump, you know, even the best of math student uh, out there if you don't slow down and, you know, really write out each step, okay? Uh, this is where people kind of skip steps or they just go too quick. That's how you get yourself in trouble. So, you know, always show your work step by step by step by step. If you don't understand something, well, that's a good thing because you're like, I don't get this. Now you know what you need to work on. The worst thing you could do is not address your weak areas in math. So if you're struggling for any um, any particular type of you know specific math topic, whether it's the lowest common denominator, or fractions, positive, negative numbers, etc., just check out my math help program. I have a ton of courses from basic, more kind of basic math all the way up to pre-calculus. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.